All right, good evening, good evening. How's everyone doing today? Uh, I told everybody I'd try to get here on time tonight. It's 9.15. Uh, my name is Robert C. Ayala, and I'm a real Democrat running for the Democratic nomination for president to stop the campaigns of Joe Biden, Donald Trump, or really any candidate telling us how to live, what to ingest, or how to look. Enough is enough. How's everybody doing today? All right, so what I had indicated uh, yesterday as my uh, puppy is deciding that he wants to uh, drink a gallon of water at the moment is that uh, I'm just gonna log on here and I had initially said uh, it was gonna be Monday uh, Monday to Thursday uh, five days a week but it's not that's Tuesday it was supposed to be Tuesday through Friday but I'm thinking that Fridays are probably not going to be a good day for anybody. So just going to right now leave it on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 9.15 p.m. And uh, I just want to make sure everything's running, running well here. So when people don't show up or, um, you know, the algorithm doesn't promote uh, the stream, what I want to do is just really run down uh, the topics of the day and, you know, indicate what my thoughts are uh, with everything. So uh, until I see somebody jump on here and ask some questions, because that's really what I want, is I want people to be able to jump on here and ask me questions and say, what would you do? And offer a different vision than some of the other candidates. So first things first is Hawaii is burning and uh, it's got to be terrible. Uh, I can't even imagine. I know that somehow the climate folks are going to come out and try to blame the climate. But I will remind everybody that the Hawaiian islands just are volcanoes. And there's probably a lot of unpredictability with regards to them anyways. Uh, these wild, wildfires seem to be, uh, and they spread so quick, nobody really was able to stop it. And it says that um, some people actually ran into the sea uh, because it, it came upon them that fast. So our prayers and thoughts are with Hawaii. And, um, you know, hopefully Biden will get some aid there and get some assistance there in a very quick manner. And that this doesn't become one more political tool for our government to not help uh, its citizens. So uh, thoughts and prayers uh, with my uh, Hawaii. And uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what anyone can do that's an island. So it's not like we can just all get in our cars and head there. So I'm not sure what our options are. And I don't think just giving money at this moment without you know knowing where it's gonna be directed and where uh, the aid is going to be needed the most is appropriate at this moment. So just make sure as you're watching it um, that you're not out there falling into any uh, traps that purport to help uh, the people of Hawaii and then actually you're just going to take your money. So thoughts and prayers to Hawaii. All right, we're going to continue here. There doesn't seem to be anyone in the room. And again, I'm going to reinforce uh, the idea that this is, uh, I'm going to be here Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 9.15 p.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 9.15 p.m. I'll be doing other videos, but I have outreach, and I'm trying to contact people, and I need a little bit of time to do that. 
And I think when people get off of work on Fridays, they're really not trying to engage in that manner. They're just trying to decompress. And um, you know, I'm trying to attract people, so I don't want to do things that uh, hedge people into having to choose one or the other. Uh, on with the day's stories, um, Biden. Uh, with ban on high tech, U.S. investments, Biden raises tensions with China. I, you know, I, I think my thoughts on China with everybody is that it's a it's a big country with a lot of people, and the people of China probably want a free government at some point in their future. And I don't think there's a whole lot of people doing business with China other than Elon Musk. And so everyone buying uh, Teslas or buying, you know, Chinese products, and that's not a problem. However, I want to point out something. Because part of being the president of the United States is having some compassion and, yeah, some love for your neighbors. And so I just want to jump over to uh, the South China Morning Post. And China State Council focuses on national flood relief as Beijing toll rises to 33 people. Um, if you don't know, uh, China has had probably the worst amount of flooding in over 100 years. It's hit Beijing. Um, they literally had to rescue people with boats and, and it was on some other Chinese papers but you know as with everything else with the People's Republic they they don't they see those things as weakness and so they don't want to show it so that people can help them but why is it important to us because you know on a day where 33 citizens of that country die and perish in floods and uh, national uh, weather that's unpredictable our president comes out and bans, makes a ban that really, I don't think anyone was really, there's nobody planning on really working in China. I think everybody with half a brain and any kind of intellectual property knows that uh, going into China with that is guaranteed that you'll be out of business probably a year later because your idea will be copied and duplicated so quick, faster than you could ever do it because you don't have the resources, nor do you have a state government that is uh, able to do that if they see it as a security issue for their country. So this idea that we have, you know, a uh, ton of defense industries uh, in China is just unnecessary. Uh, it's not true. And Biden coming out on a day when they're experiencing a national emergency and poking them in the eye, uh, I think is one of those things that is why when we look at the warships that were off the coast of Alaska with Russia, and there were so many of them, that it's their right to be where they were, but there doesn't need to be, we don't need to be having provocation with China. They believe the average citizen makes about $7,000 a year. Uh, they live in a very uh, repressive regime. And, you know, it's, it, it, you know, there. I don't know who said it, I don't know if it was Jimmy Carter, I don't know if it was Ronald Reagan, but sooner or later the United States has to deploy a policy that gets to the hearts and minds of the citizens that we seek to influence. And we obviously have no uh, say with these leaders. They're going to do what they want. They're going to only worry about their existence and power. And sometimes it's our job to show uh, the other way. And so today might have been better uh, with Biden since, you know, there clearly are some political interferences with China and Biden and his family you know, might have been more appropriate today to uh, offer the Chinese people aid and boats and just uh, a gesture, a helping hand. So, you know, I think those are the things that I would do a little bit differently. You know, your enemies are going to be your enemies, but it doesn't mean that you can't kill them with kindness. Okay, so we'll move on to that. Um, this is another interesting one. Um, the special counsel uh, obtained search warrant for Trump's Twitter account. 
Um, folks, everybody should just get off social media. The thing is, is no matter what happens, if you're on social media and you're typing all the time and you say something inappropriate or it's not in a manner that others think that you should have said it, the government's going to use it against you. And I don't know. I don't. I don't want to applaud Mr. Musk uh, for violating a court order. Um, he's being fined. I think three hundred fifty thousand dollars. And I think it for me, it's one more of those ideas that when you're a dual citizen, you don't feel like you have to obey these rules. And so, if me, little Robbie, or you, anybody else, uh, was subpoenaed and, and told to you know, provide uh, records upon a search warrant, you are required to do so. And you, we would do it or fear of, of going to jail. But uh, when you're a dual citizen and you have billions of dollars at your disposal, I guess you don't, yeah, yeah there's one more thing, two different systems of justice for two different groups of people. And, and that's just not poor and rich and black and white, but it appears to be Democrat and Republican as well. Um, uh, I don't, if anyone takes the time who doesn't hate Trump and loves our country as a whole, we are not a country of despots and the transfer of power happened regardless of how all of us wanted it to happen. And the fact of the matter is, is Joe Biden's been president for two years. And we don't need to turn our country into the banana republic. And if you look at every single charge, including the one in New York City, they still haven't cited federal laws broken on that case. And even the one that a lot of people seem to be getting very happy about with the documents case, they don't, people don't seem to understand what a memo is. A memo, they go out all day long in corporate America. Memo this, memo that, memo. It's just a memorandum. It's possibly, let's discuss this, let's discuss that. It's not solid, it's not conclusive. It's not the end of the day. That's not what a memo is. A memo is, let's have a discussion. And so, there, you, a lot of people are focusing on a memo and all this stuff, but again, we're really splitting hairs. If you're scared of Trump, you beat Trump at the polls. That's where you beat Trump. You beat him at his own game. And going behind Americans' backs who have done nothing to threaten the country, sell out the country, espionage, traitor, none of those things are being uh, put forward, then I think it's wrong for anyone to issue search warrants on people's social media accounts. But if you're an American, you should be a little bit concerned about this because it means that you are not immune either. And so maybe it's debtor's court, maybe it's a custody battle. You know, maybe it's something that happened 10 years ago. You don't even know. You wrote it 15 years ago. And now you have to worry about everything you said or did could be under the auspices of federal law enforcement who come up with these crazy ideas about everything, including Russia. You know, Russia didn't end up being anything. I'm, I'm a Democrat. I can say that. No, everybody else wants to deny that, but it seems to be that that, that was just a big, you know, hot balloon. So, um, very sad day uh, that we're... Uh, and again, you know, when we talk about uh, equal treatment between Democrats and Republicans, um, there's nothing being done to investigate Hunter Biden or Joe Biden. I mean, they clearly said that they were on phone calls together while they're, you know, they're not selling out America in that sense, but they're peddling influence. Yeah, I don't know. Again, I don't, I don't know how you spend... Um, a certain amount of time in government and then the pay is defined and we know what the tax rate is against that pay and somehow you exceed your pay uh, by 200x I mean you're just that smart as as a senator and you just wonder well if you're that smart as a senator why are you a, a senator I mean you could have 
made billions if you're that smart in the private world. So, yeah, I just don't believe all these politicians when they come out and, you know, their, their investments and what they have has, has gone up 20-fold. So, to, you know, Elon Musk, you should surrender the Trump Twitter account uh, records to the government and let them do whatever they're going to do. The American people already decide what side they're on with Trump. I am not a Trumpian. I don't want him to be elected uh, again, but I'm not, I'm not a persecutor. We don't, we don't, I don't believe in persecuting my enemies in that sense with the law enforcement. That's just, you know, sometimes husbands and wives, they like to play those games with the law enforcement. It's just not, it's not appropriate. You can't, you can't go from the highest office in the country and then suddenly, just because you have a disagreement with a bunch of people, um, you know, and, and the transfer of power occurred, the transfer of power occurred, um, it just seems silly. So I think they're, they're creating a martyr here. You know, that's what's going to happen. Trump's going to win by martyrdom. And that's because, uh, you know, it's funny, a gentleman said today that Donald Trump and Joe Biden are about the same age. But the difference is, is uh, Donald Trump looks a lot more vibrant. Um, he can at least speak on his own, walk on his own, and seems to know where he's going most of the time. Uh, Slow Mo Joe. That's my new nickname for him. Um, I, I want to also apologize about last night. I had said Illinois. I apologize, Illinois. It was Ohio. Uh, but my facts remain the same. Um, abortion is just a dumb argument. It, it, this whole thing about what people can do with their health care is a dumb argument. And it just seems silly that we're going to enshrine the right to kill anything in any state constitution. So I'm not going to rehash that again. That's just what I feel on that. You know, and as we're going through all these topics, it's going to be weird because I already had actually gone through a little bit this earlier to outline what I was going to do. Um, yeah, I, I, this is, wasn't in the paper earlier. And so, eh, I mean, I don't know enough about Ecuador right now to know what's going on down there. Obviously something... They don't like somebody, but um, my heart's out to his family, whoever he is, and obviously the U.S. government will probably have something to say on it, but I don't know. Again, this is, this is something I was talking about last night with regards to America has a whole southern hemisphere, South America huge, and yet somehow millions of people traverse Mexico to get here, uh, you know, with, with nothing somehow. And we have these countries completely in South America, Venezuela, Ecuador, uh, Nicaragua, is that right? Uh, Venezuela, uh, Nicaragua, Chile. There's, there's one, I'm not very familiar as any other Americanism, but the point is, is we have all these countries right south of our border and we could really implement American policies that not only would help the citizens of these countries that seem to have these leaders that come and go and don't ever improve the lives of people. I mean, Brazil is another one down there. And we could really form new alliances and new resources, and we don't really have to go across the world uh, anymore and, and beg Europe for, for anything. You know, we can balance the field uh, with this side of the globe and let that side of the globe balance itself on its own. We're not going to leave them, but they need to balance themselves on their own. Um, all this other stuff, again, look at, so we're on the, I don't know who these folks are, I apologize. But I think this is the really interesting ones. Okay, folks, the two biggest ones. First of all, the Utah man accused of threatening Biden. Uh, you shouldn't threaten any president, so that just seems stupid. But look at this one right here. 98, and you're going to have to bear with me here because I'm going to gonna take off going to take off the, uh, move my camera here. Okay, look at that. So everybody should go follow this one. This is pretty sick, okay? Uh, so an FBI agent was killed and 98 arrests and child abuse inquiry that followed killing of FBI agents. Now, I'm not gonna go into this because this is not my frame of law and order. And we know that children go missing in America all day long. Um, my family is impacted with missing children. 
So I just, I don't need to go there. But what I want to say to you folks that seems really interesting is out of all the day's news and under the actors and comedians, they put the most important things, which I think would be important, someone trying to kill the President of the United States and the fact that 100 people in the United States and Australia were part of a pedophile ring. And that's just disgusting. And we really should talk about that and because those allegations have surfaced before about things. And it makes you wonder that why it's at the bottom of the New York Times. You know, that's important. That should be right up here on the top. It shouldn't, it shouldn't even be. It's a Trump Hawaii burning. I mean, six dead is awful, but you know, uh, a sex ring with children in the United States that, you know, captures 98 criminals from the United States to Australia, that's, 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 that's world news. And you'll probably find the rest of the world talking about that, but not us. So, just seems weird. People should look into that. And um, we need to separate the politics of the FBI and the FBI that goes out every day and stops this kind of crap and stops people from trying to kill the president or trying to kill you or I. Um, Russia, the drones, I wrote a piece on that. Um, I just suggest that everybody take a look at it. And it's uh, robertcayala.com forward slash Ukraine. Um, I'll just run through it real quick. Uh, Ukraine needs to identify its rational endgame based on its ability to maintain said endgame. Upon such a determination, as long as the outcome is able to achieve an operational outcome of greater than 65%, then Ukraine should pursue such options via an equipment list through Ukraine's Lend-Lease that will ensure such goals. And upon such a determination, the United States will stand behind such a proclamation and determination by Ukraine. And upon such a proclamation, the United States of America will no longer provide aid that American taxpayers will be liable for. Funding other wars is not an American position that I feel that we should be doing. We can supply you with weapons, and we can come out and we can help democracy every single chance we get. And we can give the tanks, and we can give the planes, and we, anyone who is a credible ally, I have no problem. But they need to pay the bill. It's their bill, and they need to pay and fight for their freedom with their money. So that would be my thing on the Russia thing. Um, I will say that on this issue, Joe Biden has failed every human in Ukraine. He lacked the posture to force Putin's hand in the beginning. He failed in the early stages of arming Ukraine, offering cowardness instead of swords. Joe Biden failed so many people that helped America in Afghanistan, lost U.S. troops, equipment, and hardware with a chaotic exit in Afghanistan. It was not a successful exit. And with regards to that, I know there are gold star soldiers and I'm sorry but we should make sure that we're not um, politicizing the decision of war um, with trying to bring our troops home I think the American people wanted the troops home from Afghanistan I don't know why it went as crazy as it did uh, you can go back and look at you know C-1 planes trying to fly off with people helpless people running it's just an awful scene right and so uh, Joe Biden lost U.S. troops, equipment, and hardware with the CATA exit from Afghanistan. Joe Biden's allowing China to establish a forward operating base in Cuba. It's actually been established since 2019, so we could probably say that Trump's the one that allowed that to get established. And they're doing this, both of them are doing this, rather than removing the embargo and turning Cuba into an ally and, an ally and a friend. Uh, again, the whole Cuba thing seems so stupid. You have an island of 11 million people in the Caribbean, surrounded by a whole host of Spanish islands and countries that all want to do business with Cuba and want to enact some type of change that brings about real democracy. And over and over, the U.S. government stands in the way as though, you know, they're our greatest threat. Our greatest threat is on the other side of the world, and they have lots of ships that just went up to Alaska, so maybe we should stop worrying about the southern side of our country. Uh, make them our friends, make them our allies, help them uh, onto our cause, and I think uh, we would be better uh, for that. So, <coughs> excuse me, um, I think that's going to be it. 
Um, all this other stuff's really not important to me. So that's just uh, where we're at today. Um, I want to thank everybody uh, when you watch this later, if you don't watch it or you do watch it later. Uh, again, please, uh, every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, probably right up till about Thanksgiving, um, I will be in Iowa, uh, I believe in January. Um, I believe the Iowa caucuses begin in February, but I will be there. Uh, I like to make some noise one way or another. Um, so in the meantime, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays, um, pretty much every week from 9.15 p.m., stop in um, here on YouTube at uh, Robert C. Ayala. And my name, again, is Robert C. Ayala, and I'm a real Democrat running for the Democratic nomination to stop the campaigns of Joe Biden, Donald Trump, or any other candidate telling us how to live, what to ingest, or how to look. You guys have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow.